We finally have some PvP tuning after a few weeks of Blizzard being AFK. While they've apparently been busy re-releasing Classic Classic WoW version 6 Remastered Edition. Anyway, with huge buffs to Windwalker Monk, Fire Mage, and Frost DKs, we decided it's time to update our Solo Shuffle tier list. Quick question, what does every single player at the top of the Solo Shuffle ladder have in common? The answer? Time. Time to perfectly tweak and set up their UI and add-ons. Time to practice their damage or healing rotation. Time to learn the ins and outs of every spec. And most importantly, time to actually play, get comfortable, and experience arena. It's no wonder that the best players are the ones who play for 12 hours a day every day. Time is the most important resource for improving. Which is why here at Skillcapped, we focus on fast-tracking your learning as much as possible. Be it through setting up your UI perfectly with just one click with the Skillcapped add-on package, condensing hours of knowledge from the best players in the world into custom-designed, easy-to-digest class guides, or even teaching you exactly how to counter the spec you've been struggling with in a matter of minutes. We provide you not only with more time to play, but all the resources needed to improve. And best of all, if you don't find yourself climbing by at least 400 rating using our service, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. Let's kick things off with every change coming to the melee meta this week. First up on the chopping block was Blood DK of all things, who got a pretty hefty nerf to Death Strike. That's right, in case you've been out of the loop, Blood has been trending recently and was arguably the best DK spec in Solo Shuffle. That's right, due to some wonky damage scaling with Death Strike, Blood DKs were hitting pretty f hard all while having some really obscure mechanics, like an AoE silence. Of course, for ethical reasons, we typically do not include tanks on any tier list, but with these nerfs, we would probably expect Frost and Unholy to be better once again. And speaking of which, Frost DK was blessed by some pretty beefy damage buffs to Obliterate, Frost Strike, and Breath of Sindragosa. As a result, they will be moving up a tier from their position a few weeks ago. We still have a few concerns about the linear playstyle of Frost DK in Solo Shuffle. You already know by now that its win condition is simply gripping a bunch of players up and then blasting them down every 45 seconds with Pillar of Frost. It can feel like a bit of a one trick, but its gimmick happens to be very strong. Shout out to Zeke for developing the spec over all these years. He is named the Frost God for a reason. But Frost isn't alone in the wave of DK tuning, as Unholy will also be getting some fairly large damage buffs, which will help undo some of the nerfs of the early season. Unholy DK is a bit tricky to rank in Solo Shuffle since it is also a bit gimmicky. The spec is really good at doing huge AoE damage, but falls a bit flat when it comes to single target pressure. These buffs definitely help, but might not be enough to elevate them to the high tiers once again. We should note that until this point, Unholy DK had one of the lowest win rates of any melee up to rival ratings. The next underperforming melee to get buffs was Demon Hunter. Now, while these numbers might seem a bit significant, the spells getting damage increases are fairly weak, including auto attack damage of all things. These changes were meant to, quote, increase the consistency of their sustained damage, but if it wasn't obvious, DH does not need a buff to auto attack in order to feel great again. What it truly needs is to feel scary during meta. If Demon Hunters aren't doing big bursts and stuns, they're not really noticeable in Arena. So despite these buffs, DH will remain on the mid-tiers for another week. Maybe it's Karma for the Dragonflight rework, but who knows. Speaking of Karma, Windwalker Monk was another spec to get a wave of damage buffs, but these ones seem a bit more significant, especially to Blackout Kick, which is getting a bunch of new modifiers. These buffs did come with a bit of a nerf to Windwalker passive defense, with Dance of the Windlord being reduced in effectiveness. In any case, we now think that Monk is in a position possibly to move up at least half a tier, since damage is truly king in Solo Shuffle, and Monk defensives are still great overall in the bracket. Windwalker is one of those specs we've routinely overranked this expansion. On paper, it should be very strong, but for now, we're going to keep it as a bit of a wild card. There were also a few minor changes this week, including a minor buff to Eye for an Eye to Ret Paladin, which doesn't really matter too much, especially considering the spec was already doing well. Lately, it seems like Ret has some new technology up their sleeves and are doing insane bursts with the Templar exclusive Hammer of Light, which can hit for over 3 million damage. Overall, though, after their major rework, Ret Paladin is poised to be a high tier threat for the remainder of the season. Both warrior specs also got a few hero talent buffs. Arms got a bit of a survivability boost to Colossus, which is a bit of a niche build in the meta. Colossus warriors are defined by Demolish, which is actually one of the hardest hitting abilities in game, but requires them to sacrifice a bit of mobility in order to pick it up. 
And on a similar note, Fury Warrior is seeing more buffs to the Mountain Thane hero spec. While we definitely think this build is playable in some matchups, it means having to give up the mobility offered by Slayer. Fury Warrior is one of those melee specs which really needs uptime in order to work, so any loss in mobility is not ideal. In any case, both Arms and Fury will continue to be high tier going into the midseason. Before we reveal our tier list, we need to be clear that we have squished our rankings slightly as a result of your feedback. Instead of having a bunch of specs in A+, we moved most back down to A and then adjusted everyone else as needed. We should also note that Feral technically got buffed this week thanks to a higher proc chance on Apex Predator. They were obviously the best melee anyway, so no changes to our S tier. Overall though, despite a few outliers, the melee meta is fairly competitive. Right now, the strength of Holy Paladins is simply gatekeeping some melee from being a tier higher. Now it's time to shift our attention to the ranged meta, where there are a lot of winners, including BM Hunter, which is the biggest winner, as it got absolutely zero nerfs this week. Jokes aside, the first spec to see changes is Mark's Hunter, who will be getting a few damage buffs, most notably to aimed shot and rapid fire, helping offset the nerf they suffered with the Dark Ranger rework. In case you forgot, Mark's Hunters virtually went extinct a few weeks ago after a perfect storm of Mythic Plus rebalancing and BM Hunter buffs. This included the removal of a key passive that buffed aimed shot and rapid fire, now being offset with this week's tuning. Anyway, for the past few weeks, it's like every hunter collectively decided it was time to park Marks in the garage, taking BM for a spin on the road to easy rating gains. With these changes, however, we expect Marks to once again feel competitive, and it will be moving up to the high tiers once more. Moving on, both Arcane and Fire Mage saw some changes. Arcane got some damage buffs for what seems like the eighth time in a row, as Arcane Blast, Barrage, Missiles, Surge, and Arcanosphere of all things got buffed. This week's tuning also includes some buffs to the Sun Fury hero spec, which are probably a bit irrelevant. You know when it's a bit obvious when someone is trying too hard to fit in? That's Sun Fury. Right now, Spell Slinger is just too convenient to play for Sun Fury to ever catch on. Splinters can hit pretty hard, and Sun Fury is still far too reliant on hard casting Arcane Blasts in order to be ultra viable in solo shuffle. Fire Mage, on the other hand, is going to be a true wild card, as it's getting a massive list of damage buffs to some core spells, including Pyroblast and Meteor, which are coming alongside another set of irrelevant Sun Fury buffs. You can be certain that Fire will be way more competitive, especially considering Pyroblast is already buffed in PvP. What's unclear is whether these buffs will be enough to make Fire as competitive as Frost. Fire is one of those specs which really need punchy damage in order to excel. If combustion damage isn't scary, Fire is doing too hot. Right now, we're just going to wait and see how these changes pan out, but expect to see more fire mages in your lobby this week. Up next is Ellie Shaman, who are getting an obscure mix of buffs and nerfs. We know there's a lot of changes posted here, but the TLDR is slightly less burst with slightly more sustained damage. Ironically, these might be buffs overall. Nerfs to burst certainly hurt a little bit, as Ellie Shaman is one of those specs whose entire win condition revolves around blasting the enemy team as hard as possible every 30 seconds with Primordial Wave. This expansion, Blizzard is once again trying to make Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning relevant for the first time in seven years, but we highly doubt the playstyle will catch on. Spamming out those meatballs is what Shaman is designed for these days. Moving on, there were some minor buffs to Hellcaller Warlocks, which really only affects destruction, as Affliction Warlocks need to play Soul Harvester for those huge Haunt Shadow Bolt one-shots. In general though, all three Warlock specs continue to be highly competitive. Destro is arguably the worst, but not by far. While it tends to lack its iconic finishing power, Destruction has managed to hold up in 2024, even when Demo and Affliction are performing better across all ratings. That brings us to our updated rankings for the ranged meta. In case you missed it, there were zero BM Hunter changes this week, so expect another week of highly skilled players in your lobbies. Jokes aside, we're going to keep our a tier for casters, as we do think that Affliction and Ellie are marginally better than everyone on the A tier, but still weaker than BM overall. Fire Mage is definitely the spec to monitor this week. Now though, let's wrap things up with updates to the healer meta. The first healer to see changes was Resto Druid, who got a 25% buff to Swift Mend, which was paired to a relatively obscure buff to Wild Stalker, which hasn't really seen much play outside of 2v2. Now, before you get too excited, the Swift Mend change is around a 2% healing increase overall, which is definitely not enough to bump Druid up a tier. As we recently discovered, Resto Druid is the worst performing healer up to rival ratings by a pretty considerable margin. While healing buffs are net positive, Resto Druid simply lacks any meaningful way to slow down damage, and with Burst being so ridiculously high, there are multiple tiers behind Holy Paladin and Disc Priest. 
Holy Priest was another underperforming healer to see changes, but actually got some pretty substantial buffs, targeting a majority of their healing output with a crucial buff to Serenity and Flash Heal. Previously, Holy Priest was our lowest ranking healer, but we think this wave of tuning will elevate them up to the mid tiers across all ratings. Just like Resto Druid, Holy Priest doesn't really suffer a throughput problem as much as it suffers from the inability to slow down damage. Both healers actually have great HPS, but that's because they are forced to spam heal all game, all while being easily punished by mistakes. That leaves Resto Shaman as our last healer to see any changes, but this time to their damage of all things. Seems a bit strange. Is damage really what Resto Shaman is lacking? Absturge actually joked around and said that these are secretly healing nerfs since now shamans might try and tunnel vision their damage. In any case, shamans probably won't be making any upward movement this week. Solo shuffle is sometimes too chaotic for healer damage to matter anyway unless you're an evoker zipping across the map to AoE purge. Now, we know what you're thinking, this healer tier list looks weird, we know, we know. But right now, there seems to be a pretty big gap between the top 4 healers and the bottom 3. It's possible that Holy Priest might exceed our expectations, but the buffs to Resto Druid and Resto Shaman seem quite insignificant. If you're looking to pick up a new alt, our damage and healing courses save you weeks or even months of your time, condensing down everything you need to know into bite-sized videos. Every expansion, we help thousands of players just like you hit their rating goals. You don't have to be scared to sign up because we have a rank up guarantee that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you're serious about climbing, visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.